there is uh, actually no approved therapy currently for warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And everything that we do is really based on consensus guidelines and the prior experience and recommendations. Uh, but that being said, the standard of care for warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia that everybody uses is steroids. And we typically start with prednisone, one milligram per kilogram per day for most patients. Um, and in patients with either severe disease or patients who cannot tolerate prolonged steroid therapy, we add rituximab therapy. Um, in patients who haven't received rituximab therapy and don't respond to steroids or relapse on a steroid taper, we proceed with rituximab therapy. Unfortunately, after that, there is really no good treatment options. There is a variety of immunosuppressive agents that are associated with toxicities and response rates in about 40 to 60 percent range, and they include ezithioprine, uh, cyclosporin, CELSEP. Um, in splenectomy can be used in uh, uh, patients and have been used in a third line setting, but again, it's associated with uh, severe uh, infections in three to five percent of patients, which can be lethal despite uh, appropriate immunizations in this patient population. There is also associated risk of thrombosis with splenectomy. So the unmet needs in patients with warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia are novel therapies that would allow us to reduce the duration of steroid exposure or potentially eliminate the duration of steroid exposure. Patients with warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia have frequent relapses and as many as 70% of them have ongoing disease requiring therapy. So subsequent lines of therapies in patients who failed rituximab, progressed after splenectomy, uh, are definitely needed, preferably with favorable toxicity profile and uh, low risk of side effects, easier administration. And of course, my favorite is short duration of therapy. No therapies that require prolonged administration.